Hey, John here. Let's talk about if-then-else expressions and loops in, in PostScript today. Uh, let's fire up our favorite interpreter. We're not going to really look at the screen. Uh, we're going to just talk about how to deal with the conditional uh, expressions and stuff like that. Okay, so along with strings and numbers and procedures that all can go on the stack, you can also have a conditional, a Boolean, like true. So if I put true on that and I take P stack, there's a true on the stack. I can also put a false in there. All right, uh, clear those out. If I want to, I can put, let's say I'm gonna put a true here. And let's put a procedure in here that goes one, two, three, and then just prints it out, a debug print, okay? So what we got on the stack is a procedure on the top of the stack and a conditional right there, a Boolean. If I now type if, what's gonna happen is it'll pop a procedure and it'll pop a Boolean. If the Boolean is true, the if operator will execute the procedure and then throw it away. And if the conditional was false, it'll just simply throw the procedure away and carry on, all right? So right now, it's true and it printed it and executed it, right? So let's do uh, false for completeness, right? Four, five, six equals, equals, put that procedure on there like so. Do an if and now it's false, so it doesn't do anything. If then out, that's, that, that's good for an if. Let's say we wanna do an if then, right? Let's say we do true. Now what we do is we put two procedures on there, one, 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 and then another procedure. Let's go two, two, two. All right, let's have a look, see, all right? Two procedures, and then we type if else. Now what this is gonna do is pop two procedures and then the Boolean, obviously. If the Boolean is true, it'll do this one, the first one that I pushed in there. If it's false, it'll do the one up there, okay? So I said true, so I got that. So let's go ahead and try it again, just to prove that it works. Sake of completeness, you know. And then type in the, uh, let's make sure it looks good. Yes, it does. And we do another if else down here. Now it did the uh, else half, right? So there's your if then else a la postscript. Now, that's not that much fun <laughs> if you got hard code the trues and falses in there, right? So, uh, I mean, they could obviously come from variables. We know how to make those work. They can also come from conditional expressions like this. Let's say if one, two, three, and I put four, five, six, and I say less than, all right? Well, what did that put in the stack? I did three things, and yet there's only one thing in the stack. Well, the less than operator pops two things off the stack. If the first one is less than the second one, it pushes a true on the stack. Otherwise, it'll push a false on the stack. Let's clear that out and say four, five, six, one, two, three, less than. All right, so there's another way to get a true and a false more programmatically. And again, these could come from uh, variables or it could even be values that you get out of procedures. Anything that can leave stuff on the stack can be used by subsequent operators. So let's clear that out. So all the operators are LT, GT, EQ, NE, GE, and LE. All right, now of course all these are gonna be errors <laughs> because all of them wanted to read pairs of numbers and compare them. But uh, so yeah, you can use any one of these things you want in a conditional expression to create a true or a false and then feed that into an if. All right, so as things get more complicated, what if you want a conjunction, right? A more complex expression, like if A is greater than B or C is less than D or something like that, all right? So let's say we got one, two, three, four, five, six, LT. That one's gonna be true, right? All right. And let's say five, six, seven is less than two is going to be a false, right? All right. So let's say we take this, which reduces to true, and we know that. And we take that, which reduces to false. We can then say and. Okay. So and wants to pop two things off the stack and see if they're both true, right? Well, let's take a closer look at what this did, right? They're both uh, sitting there on the stack, right? I never took the result of this 
off the stack to begin with. And I just left it there while I did this one. So now I got these two things and false and true is false, right? So now you get the general hang of things, right? So let's say you end up with a true and a false on the stack. And, you know, for whatever reason, from other, you know, co uh, conditional expressions, you can use the exclusive or, and that'll be true because they're different, right? Now you can also use just the not, right? That's going to take one thing off the stack. True. And then you say not, it'll pop it off, negate it, and push back the results, which will flip it over to false, right? So now you can put any arbitrarily complex expressions you want into your PostScript code. So let's look at another way to consume these conditional expressions using loops. So let's start nice and simple. Let's say I want to just do something three times, right? Three times. You put a three on the stack. You put a procedure that you want to do. Let's just say one, two, three, double equals. So it's going to just print out a one, two, three if this procedure executes. And then I just simply type repeat. Okay, let's look at the stack real quick first. What do we got in there? We got a procedure and a count. So what is this going to do? It's going to pop a procedure. It's going to pop a uh, number, an integer, and it will do the procedure that many times. Okay, so perfect. It printed it out three times. So whatever, whatever you want to put in there, right? Okay, so that's pretty basic. Let's say we have a loop that we want to have a counter in. So we want to go from zero by one until we get to four. Okay, we put a procedure on the stack. It just, all I'm gonna do is print what the top element is on the stack right now. I didn't add anything to the stack. I'm just gonna print it out. So what's this gonna do? Uh, let's go ahead and end P stack first, right? Because there's all these extra things on there, right? So four is gonna pop, you know, four things. It's gonna go from zero by one until it gets to four and it'll do the procedure. So what happened here? The four operator pushes its count onto the stack and then it executes the procedure. When the procedure's done, the four advances its count by one. And if it hasn't reached the end yet, it pushes the current value on the stack and it executes the procedure again. So what's happening is every time I say print out the top thing on the stack and throw it away, what I'm doing is I'm printing out this iterating counter. So presumably the procedure body will consume that count each time it runs and use it, you know, to affect what its operation is going to be. So while we're here, let's look at another thing that uh, you can do do with integer values just for fun. So let's say I want to say the same loop, a 0, 1, 4, but in this procedure I'm going to type one string CVS and print this out instead. So what this is going to do, this right here the string operator creates a string, a blank string object with this many characters in it, and it puts that blank string on the stack. The CVS operator takes a empty string from the stack, and then it takes an integer, and we already know the next thing it finds is going to be the loop iterating counter. It takes that integer, it formats it into a string, and it puts it into this string object. So at the point we get to the debug print function here, it's going to print out what's on the stack, which will be the counter as a string instead of as an integer. All right, and we all know strings have these parentheses around them, all right? This will be useful for uh, printing counts on a page if we, when we get there, okay? So we're looking a little bit ahead here. The repeat and for loops are great when you have a requirement that's simple. But if you have a loop that you need to run while some complex expression is true or until it's false, then you need to use a loop that's structured accordingly. There is one more kind, which is essentially an endless loop that will run until it reaches an exit like this. So you, you, you push a procedure onto the stack, like one, two, three, and we'll print it out. 
And we'll type exit like this. So this is a trivial example of this loop, right? You push a procedure on the stack and you simply say loop. This loop will run forever until an exit operator is encountered. Now that happens the first time through, okay? So this is a little bit overly simplistic, but just to illustrate the point, okay? So let's structure this to do the same thing that the for loop just did. So the first thing we need to do is define a few variables. We have the counter that will iterate from 0 to 9. We'll create a variable called max, which is the limit. We'll go ahead and define an increment just to make things nice and simple. We will put the value of the counter on the stack and print it out, like we did in the first for loop example. When we're done with that, we're going to ask, is the counter greater than or equal to the maximum value? If so, it's going to exit. Otherwise, it won't. And when it won't, we'll add 1 to the counter, or we'll add the increment value to the counter, right? So counter is redefined as the counter summed with the current increment value. Not a problem. Let me go like that, and we do the loop. Now this should count from 0 to 9, just like it did before. Okay. So while this is equivalent to the for loop we saw earlier, it should be obvious that you can put an arbitrarily complex expression in here that you cannot model with a for loop or even a repeat, right? So whenever you have like a conjunction or something, a compound expression in here that's complex, you can't just do by counting or repeating, that's when you want to use a for loop. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.